Chapter 4.5, Part 4. So I'm going to go a little quicker in this part, make it a little, try to make it a little shorter. So we're going to get into illusion and the transformation of ideas. Modern contemporary artists are often using illusionism to highlight an idea. Non-Western artists, by Western we usually mean European, uh, convey spiritual transformation through illusionism and then into the U.S. But, of course, we have our Native American art, too, which is not... Is, which is also which is a non-Western art form, if that makes sense, or an, or an undeveloped art form. Okay, so we're going to look at Manet's A Bar at the Follies Bergeret. Now, this is one of this is a controversial piece in the sense that the way he did not use um, uh, accurate sort of perspective here. He this is a mirror in the back, and this this confused me until I actually started teaching about this. As a viewer, I always thought this seemed a little odd. I thought at first that there were two women, and that the there was there was a bar that wrapped around here. That's the way I saw it, and then there was a fellow over here. But what we're supposedly seeing is the back of her, and then the mirror is stretched out to show us the activity in the bar. There was entertainment here. This was sort of a lowbrow sort of a place to be. There are trapeze artists. You can see the feet right there. Um, scantily clad women, and often the barmaids or the other performers um, would be, you know, um, proposition for sexual favors. Um, and I don't know; it doesn't. We don't go into much detail, but but perhaps that was something they acted on. So the gentleman that we see here is is where we're standing here. So we're this gentleman, if that makes sense. He's perhaps propositioning her. Um, in a way, you know, asking her to meet him later, something like that. And so we kind of get her expression here. Over here, she seems much more um, willing to interact with him. The posture even seems a little bit different. But it's not really a true mirror image. He's playing around with that a little bit here so that you can see some of the other characters going on there. And that if we were right up against the mirror, like we would just see the the um, uh, this would be right lined up right behind her. So it's tilted a little bit. It's a little bit off, but it's trying to show her emotional state. Perhaps we don't know. The bottles as well don't quite line up. There's another bottle here, sort of blocking this uh, lighter wine here, a rosé perhaps, or maybe it's whiskey. Hard to tell. But it's not accurate, and that is not the point necessarily in his piece. Uh, remember with the Impressionists, we're starting to loosen up and we're getting away from the idea of hyper-realism because the camera has been invented and is now at 1882 in wide use, so the Impressionists are no longer interested in accuracy and um, perfect depictions of space. The next one we're going to look at is the Whirling Log Ceremony, 1925. This is a tapestry. Um, if you remember our sand paintings, I think we get an image of it. Um, the Navajo medicine men in chapter 4.2 doing a very similar uh, motif, similar uh, style of sand painting here with our corn and our different pigments and so on, um, creating the sand painting. Now sand paintings are transitional, they're temporary, uh, they're a healing art. Somebody sits inside of it. And there's a ritual and ceremony, and then it's it's demolished. So this artist, um, uh, um, sorry, I'm blanking on his name, Hostin Claw, he decided to make permanent uh, depictions of sand paintings and weavings. He got a lot of flack from the other Native Americans, the Navajo, uh, for doing this because he, he's sort of letting a window into their ritual practices and um, to Westerners because this was a blanket that was sold um, and that caused some controversy. There's, a, there's still really ongoing um, dialogue and controversy about many Native American tribes do not wish their objects, or their art objects to be shared or sold in the wider world. Of course, the horse is kind of out the gate at this point for the last 150 years that's been happening, but some uh, tribes are getting their work back, and they're also putting limits on what can be sold to the public. So at any rate, we have our, um, this is a piece 
This is our rainbow goddess here going around here, but leaving this area open. Uh, there's many symbols here and transformative elements. The idea being, and this is corn, if you can see that, corn stalk here. The idea being that you're transformed by looking at this piece. So that's the way illusion is working um, in this art piece, that you are um, focused on it and it will restore harmony. It's a powerful vehicle. So a lot of artwork is intended for spiritual use or transformational use uh, to the viewer. M remember we looked at Rothko's Chapel, so that's more of a modern art example, but there are a variety of different works where in looking at it, um, you will feel something and you will be transformed by it. Another example in this way, although this was used in an actual ritual, I wouldn't say that that rug was not, but that's not it's depicting a sand painting, if that makes sense. It's not the actual sand painting. Um, this is a crouching male transformation figure. Um, and this is about uh, 3,000 years old, 2,500, 3,000 years old. And it's serpentine is what they're thinking, or perhaps jade is this greenish uh, stone. And then there are some cinnabar throughout, like painted. This might have been completely painted, but stone doesn't paint very well, especially polished stone like this. It doesn't really stay on the surface for a long period of time. Four and, four and a half inches, so small, uh, being able to be handheld by the med medicine man, and it would be a um, shaman transforming into a jaguar. So this would have a... Um, ritualistic meaning and the shaman would hold it in his hand during the ritual and he also symbolizes rain and fertility. Last work we're going to look at, I believe, no we have two more, sorry, cubism. Now cubism is, uh, we, think of, we think of Picasso. Picasso and Brock were quite close working together at the same time. Brock is, is attributed to inventing collage, which is a slightly different thing, but but George Brock and Pablo Picasso were both very innovative, inventive artists, and they came up with a lot of new and different ideas. One of which was cubism. So we see these sort of um, chunks of space here. Those are sort of um, three-dimensionalized um, parts of figures and uh, guitar man this is a man with a guitar we can't see it all that well this is to the point where if you remember Guernica we could still see the objects pretty well you can kind of see the head here and that would be the jawline there and maybe the mouth but it's very difficult to see this so abstraction has different levels where it's completely non-representational and there's nothing real at all that we can see but this is sort of in between where we can almost see parts of the guitar and parts of the human, but they're barely there. Um, but we're not calling this non-representation, we're just calling this highly abstracted cubism. There is a realistic piece of rope here, um, but throughout the rest of this, everything is quite distorted. And this was to do with um, representing different planes and different forms at the same time. So it's a part of Einstein's theories. You're looking at two angles of something at the same time because the idea or the theory being that um, time and place and motion were changeable things and just concepts. So it's trying to show different uh, sides of the same object at one time. Last work we're going to look at, and we kind of circle back to Pliny the Elder about, and this is Magritte's uh, play on that, uh, a painting should look like a window. So Magritte is a surrealist, and um, along with Dali and a few others, they're some of the most prolific and important surrealists. Uh, Magritte's amazing. He usually does these clouded skies, and sometimes he'll do almost like a cubist rendering of um, three-dimensional chunks in the sky. That's one famous one. The apple in the room, if you've seen that image. Um, there's there's a lot of iconic images that he's that he's painted that you may have already seen. This is called the human condition, and here is our our tongue in cheek, our playfulness with this painting that looks like a view from a window. So he's taking 
um, this painting and he's matching it up and we can just see the edge of the canvas so that we know that this is a painting. The easel helps as well. A painting that's mimicking what's happening outdoors. So in surrealism, of course, these clouds are lined up. In reality, these clouds would have moved away by the time the painting was finished. But he's playing with our perception here and giving us kind of a fun uh, way to look at it. So he's um, playing around and confronting us with linear perspective and what's important from the Renaissance. And then he's sort of breaking all those rules. So a lot of artists work really hard to learn the rules. And remember, we go back to Hogarth and him showing us all those rules of perspective and how to break them. Um, in that fun uh, print with the fisherman and the, the woman lighting a man's pipe. And Magritte is doing this in a slightly different way, uh, poking fun at perspective and um, the idea of uh, trompe l'oeil. So we want to keep the, the mind open in, in the sense of not all paintings are going to have linear perspective or atmospheric perspective. There's sometimes a conscious choice to move away from all these these. Uh, rules and regulations about how to make art and we're going to get into part one right after this and we'll get into how all those rules work. Uh, some artists are using them intuitively, some artists are using them in a rigid manner and um, following it very carefully and then some artists are kind of breaking all the rules and some are just ignoring them. So we'll get into a variety of things but now you know like the some of the intents of a variety of different artists from different periods.